We had a great uh, induction last night for Tom Peters. And that, uh, I got to tell you, the, the gang that showed up, uh, just to give you a little bit of court hit, Corvette history here, we had Kip Rosenko, who designed the true rotor Corvette. We had Randy Machin, who was working on C3 Corvettes. Uh, we had Jerry Palmer there, which I think he started on the 67, 68. And, that, uh, and then John Caffaro, and that, you know, picked up all that span in between Jerry Palmer to, to Tom Peters, and Tom had the last 20 years. So it was great to see all those guys. A lot of history, just right there in those individuals. Um, you can see some of the guys here in that, uh, you know, the lower slides kind of were out there with John, and um, kind of, of course he's given us a look because we have a car sitting about 50 mils too high. And that, uh, these, these are, it's a steel buck with a foam covered uh, wood box on it, and they have electric motors in it, but sometimes they don't always function for us uh, in the colder months of that. So we're, uh, that's why we're all kind of quiet right here because we're, we're getting out the lessons. So, but upper slide you'll see Tad's company, and uh, you know, we have a lot of dialogue with, as you can appreciate, senior leadership is involved with this car and uh, definitely shares their thoughts with us, and that there's a lot of open communication in, in with them. And these are some of the some of the pictures of, you know, we, we worked through the clay, and I think it showed you some of the developmental uh, designs, but this is really where we started to hone in on what you're seeing as the, the new Stingray. And that, uh, this, uh, this shot we took, um, you know, this really told us what the, how much the proportion can really leverage uh, the new look of a car. And, uh, and, you know, this is the biggest step we've ever taken with Corvette as far as a proportional change. It's, and you can see it's very impactful here. You know, comparing it to a Z06, you see a Z06 on the, on the street today, and it's, it's a rock star uh, to see her drive. Uh, but you can see this, this new car just eclipses it, and, and it's, it looks to be like 20 years newer. Hey, Kirk, can I chime in on that slide just a little bit? People are probably wondering what this bus is doing <laughs> back here. You know, here's a place where we're showing advanced product, and why is it something that looks like an old motor home kind of lurking in the background? That's actually a uh, converted viewing uh, vehicle. So we do this work in Michigan, and sometimes it's 20 below, and sometimes it's snowing. And here you want to look at a car outside so uh, how do you do that in the winter? How do you get a group of, you know, a bunch of softies out there uh, wanting to look at the car? So they actually converted one. They put glass panels. You can't really see it very right here, well here, but it's, the whole side of the vehicle is glass. And so you can park the cars outside and everybody can sit uh, warm and cozy and then they, they, they drive it around. So you can see from all different angles. So, um, Life is different in design. It's, it's very different. <laughs> well, well to, add, to add to that, we, we're in the bus with the senior leadership, but of course, we're out there in adverse weather and we're making changes. So as you can appreciate, usually the youngest designer that's on the, on the bus, he it's his, his or her job to run out there, take a new line, pin a mock-up, and then run back in. So there's a little seniority involved. A lot of good dialogue. We talked with the folks yesterday about aerodynamics on the new Stingray. You know, we started off in a scale model. Uh, that's that's really good for us because, as you can appreciate, we can make fast changes on this on this model. We'll in just hand modeling. Typically, we would do uh, in an eight-hour shift. We probably get 20 to 24 changes in just hand modeling with proportion there. So, so it's quick. It's still you know, I have people asking about digital tools. Well, the, the hands-on is still you know, with our sculpting capability and the, uh, the level of expertise they have, we can still move very fast in, with clay. Now, and, and Kirk, I just wanted to add that that, sc that scale model, that 40% is here at the museum. We just brought it here for you guys to see. Awesome. Thanks, Harlan. Um, when we aren't in scale, we're doing CFD, computational flow dynamics. This is basically computer simulations and that we're able to uh, pick the strands. You see those colored lines up there? Well, as, you know, the computer will run, you know, probably a thousand lines over the car, but we're more interested in certain areas uh, for study. So that's why you'll see, like, this is this is highlighted. Uh, we spent a lot of time in that front corner. It has to gather up air, but
but it also has to keep the air attached to go down the body side, and then and then you know it's got to get diverted into the rear compartment of that. So a lot of time spent tuning that. I would say probably if no less than 35 changes on that front corner, and have to get it to do all that. And then we'll come back with CFD, and we like doing using the pressure maps that you see here. Uh, you'll notice that uh, Hertz talked about the base of the windshield. How is it being further forward or actually picking up downforce in the base of the windshield? And then also uh, the Z51 rear spoiler. You can see there in the red area how much how much downforce we're getting. And as I was telling people, the the rear spoiler is really a hybrid. It's uh, it's spoiler in the middle, but it's wing in the outer corners. And what that gives us is we're using the wing section. It still gives you downforce, but it gives you lower drag. So it's it's one, it's part of that tuning of the car and. Uh, you know, our, our Alex McDonald, most guys would tell you that this car, this car is very impactful uh, to its track performance. Then the follow-up to that CFD is what you see right now on the right-hand slide there. That's actually a full-size clay that we're doing rolling road testing. And when do you know, the benefit here is that there's stuff that we're doing to the underbody as well. So it's a big tuning tool, but this is really what helps us evaluate the total downforce of the car. The last step would be to, when we get to the track and we have you know, pre-production vehicles, uh, you know, that, that's kind of our last tuning of it. This, this is where you can see the CFD, like I said, we, we can select the strands, uh, we can identify the areas of learning. Uh, the left hand side there is our brake cooling. You can see it comes in just uh, either side of the license plate. Um, you know, for the neat thing about this car is for, for any tracking, you don't have to take the plate off the center because we're not taking any air off the center line of the car. So it's all it's all done on either side. And then the next one to the right here again talking about the rear spoiler, you can see the air goes underneath is all over the top. Uh, the front cooler, you know, it's going through uh, a heat exchanger plus a condenser, and then it has to get out, out of the wheel opening uh, to get to get a certain amount of extraction. And then the lower right slide you can see the body side, is, there's no accident that that air is falling right into that side scoop. And that, uh, if you can appreciate, we did a lot of iterations with that scoop, up and down, fore and aft, uh, but that became the most optimal position. And now I'm going to kick it over. I think uh, this is a, you know, we like to, when we get to the end of the program, we have a lot of fun with uh, dropping the car into certain backgrounds and that, but this, this gives you a feel of the overall design. And you know some of the inspiration, and then we do look at uh, you know military aircraft for for surfacing, and you know there's there's things that they do with their aerodynamics that even though we're two different vehicles, we we still enjoy that aspirational value. Can I chime in on that last slide, Kirk, and then I'll introduce Brian. So one of the questions that I've gotten a lot uh, since I introduced this car, uh, and it's so related to design, what Kirk does, uh, people are looking at the shape of this inlet. And I had engineers um, write me and say, boy, design didn't do you any favors with that sloped opening. Not, not very efficient. Too bad you had to do that. So anyway, I guess these guys got it wrong, too. If you look at the angle of that one, that. Um, but there's a ton of functionality uh, around this. And we, sh we could have done just a squared off opening and they're saying, well, why do you have to go way up into the door like this? And there's a lot going on. So um, you have to have an opening. It has, you think about driving in the rain. So you might not think about that, but you're driving in the rain. And the a engine is actually breathing through the top part of this. And so there's a vacuum. The engine is sucking in air. And so imagine if we'd laid it back this way, when it's raining, they have, the water's coming in and the engine's just breathing that in. So having the shape leaning forward like that creates an umbrella, almost like an awning over that. So the water running down the side of the car actually sheds off. So having it leaning this way is very important for getting that water out of the way of the breathing engine. Another thing we have to think about is stone throw. So sticky front tires, they toss, you know, they pick stuff up off the road and they throw it up in the air, it bounces around all over the place. You don't want a blunt forward-facing element right there. Some of you guys know this from the brake cooling duct that we have in today's car. That can get hammered by little pebbles and grit and stuff over time. So having this facing down makes it a glancing blow for any stones coming. 
And there's actually a little rocker extension here. People probably think, oh, that's just for a cool design. It's a little bit of an arrow rocker extension, but the biggest thing it does is keep stones under the car. They keep stones from bouncing up and getting into this area. So including the, the door handle in this and hiding that and keeping it clean and giving you a surface where you can open the door without touching the paint. We know you guys, you know, wash your car. You don't want to touch the body color paint, so having a little accent color on there and hiding the handle underneath so you don't have to touch it at all. So all of that thinking goes into that simple design element on the side of the car. So that, that gives you a sense of how we all work together to create a car that both looks good and works really well. Same is true in interior, so I'm going to have Brian come up and talk about that. All right, good morning everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Steckel. I'm one of the uh, one of the four members on the interior design team for the 2020 Stingray. Um, I talked a little bit more in depth yesterday, so I'm gonna try and uh, be a little bit more brief so we have more time for features uh, with Harlan at the end. But, um, so this is kind of a, just it gives you an idea of, of where we started. Uh, we start every process with sketching, um, both pen and paper and uh, going in digitally. Um, and these are some of the very first sketches from Tristan Murphy, our lead interior designer, uh, showing the direction that the car took. You can see the early evolution of the cockpit shapes, you know, forming around on the on the dashboard and on the door, and how that kind of really envelops you as a driver and creates this really special driver cockpit space. That's one of the things we really wanted to make sure that we delivered for this car was a very exotic, special driving experience. And taking what you're familiar with as a Corvette. It needs to be recognizable as a Corvette, but really elevating it and uh, to the next generation. And then you can see here um, how that kind of, you know, the, the driver cockpit is, elevated, is being evolved even further, a little bit closer to uh, kind of what you'd see on today, and then like a 2LT trim. <clears throat> yeah, a couple other things you can see on this slide um, beginning to evolve are the, the square steering wheel. Um, that was really important for us. We have a, a brand new in this car. We have a 12-inch multifunction digital gauge cluster, and then as well as the 8-inch uh, Chevy MyLink display to the right. The square steering wheel was really key to allowing us to, or allowing the driver to be able to see every inch of that the uh, driver information center. And then also, uh, with the top being a little bit lower, you get a much better view of the road. You get to see the HUD get your down vision a little bit better so you can see exactly where the front of the car is and be able to place it in the right spot every time. And then the bottom of the steering wheel coming up helps you get in and out much easier, less banging your knees on the wheel, stuff like that. And then the other thing we do once we, we kind of um, pick some sketches that we like and we start moving in the direction is we work for the clay modeling team. We have a team of super talented clay sculptors just like the exterior does. And we use clay because we can move it very fast, we can make a lot of changes on the fly. We can uh, you know, model something up, put the, push the seats up against the model, sit in it, see how it feels, make sure that all the kind of assumptions that we're working with in the sketches and in math uh, actually feel right. We, can, you know, we work very hard about component placement, making sure you know, we have the our ride mode knob here, the transmission controls, make sure, make sure the screen is falling easily to hand. Uh, we really just focused on making sure everything about this driver cockpit space just feels perfect. And then here you can see some shots of the team actually working in the studio. So we have a couple of these big, long 20-foot pull-down boards so where we can put, uh, we put up sketches. You can see this is actually one of the sketches that we published. So you can see this one on the internet, and you can see the, um, the design team actually sitting in the clay model like I was just talking about here, checking out how some of the things feel. You know, I'm checking out the, the feeling of the pull grip on the door, making sure that feels like a really nice handshake that the car gives you every time you get in and out. <clears throat> And here you can see Ryan, who's he's also he's the um, design director for the program. He also worked under C7 if you've got one of those. <clears throat> and then after the clay model, um, we move into a hard model. So where we take and work with the shops and work with engineering. Here's where we really start fine-tuning the fit and finish. We're trying to get a really great level of craftsmanship um, and make this the best, best Corvette we've ever put together. And so this is a this was a part of a, a fully wrapped foam model that we made for the um, leadership within both GM Design and the company. So we actually take and make all these parts out of foam and wrap them in leather. So it looks almost like a real car. And this is a, a great opportunity for the design team to check and see how everything's fitting together. We can identify early issues that we want to improve upon for the next iteration of the design. 
So we're going through, and you can see most of these parts are either foam or aluminum, and we're just kind of checking to see how everything fits. You can see a welder and John Ferro here checking out and seeing how everything looks. <coughs> What's that? Lower right? <laughs> Look at the expressions that everybody's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of a candid shot. We're all talking about something. You know, I'm not sure what. But no this story. is. What's that? No story behind uh, uh, I'm not sure. It's a couple of years ago now. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Yeah, we're we're gonna go to lunch probably. Are almost that? <laughs> <laughs> And then this is a great rendering that the team put together here. This just, oops, sorry, this one just keeps auto advancing on me, but this is a great shot. This really tells the whole story for us. Um, it's just a, you know, the, you know, a driver in there in a kind of a racing environment, just showing the whole cockpit, you know, um, how driver focused it is, how exciting it is. You know, we just wanted this experience to be completely enveloping. Um, you know, again, great, great view down the road, every, all the controls, where they want to be. And then this shot here um, is another one. This kind of shows just the breadth of the, the bandwidth that the car can achieve. So where it's very sporty in the red car, right here. And then the next one um, just shows how much also, if you, you know, when you pick like a 3LT and you get the fully leather interior, this is showing the sky cool gray um, with the stitching and, and just how exotic it can feel and how luxurious. And then lastly, I always end on this slide because, you know, it's all about the people, it's all about the team. The great thing about Corvette is this phenomenal relationship we have between design and engineering and all the talented people that work on it. Um, sculpt, clay and digital sculptors, the design team, the engineering team. It wouldn't be the fantastic product that it is without the great relationships that we have. So this is a shot of the interior design team um, as well as engineering and sculpting. <coughs> And then uh, I want to talk to you guys also a little bit more about the color and trim. So one of the things that we wanted to do with the 2020 um, is build upon what we had already started with C7, um, with, with the, uh, the Grand Sport, with the, uh, the Rapid Blue, excuse me, and, get, and bring, the, bring to the 2020 a lot more color and trim options and a lot more material options so you can really customize the car any way you like. Um, if you select a 3LT package, you have up to 13 different interiors you can choose from, including the two-tone blue that's shown here. And I think these will auto advance through a couple different ones. There we go. So you can see the Sky Cool Gray stitch package. There's a Sky Cool Gray interior. This is a 3LT, so you can see that the cockpit shapes go Sky Cool Gray. And you get the flag stitches. Thought these auto advance, but maybe they don't. There's your adrenaline red. There's a the natural. So a lot of people have been asking us about, you know, what's the difference between natural and a natural dip? Here it is. So when you have a natural interior, you have the cockpit shapes in the natural color, and then the rest of the dashboard and console and doors are jet black. And then if you're going natural dip, what we mean with that is every leather surface. Come on. It's going to go with that, with that natural color. So you see the rest of the door, the rest of the console, and the dashboard are all going to be in that natural color. So this is a very nice, very expensive looking option. Um, it looks like a million bucks. I'm, it's, it's unbelievable that we can sell it for the price we sell it for. Um, this is showing the Morello, Morello dip option. On the Morello, you get the uh, adrenaline red stitch, and that also looks really nice. And then we have the, the two-tone blue, as I talked about a minute ago. Uh, this is the jet black with the yellow stitch package. Also looks really, really great. And the jet black with the red stitch package. And then you can see the torch red accents on the steering wheel. Um, you can also get the seat belts in up to six different colors. And I believe you can mix and match any color you want. So if you want to have a jet, or, uh, an adrenaline torch red car with adrenaline red stitching and yellow belts, you can do that. I don't know why, but you can do it. <laughs> and then we've also got a lot of different seat options. So one of the things that we heard from our customers um, talking about who bought the C7 is a lot of people would buy the competition seat because they wanted the carbon fiber and the seat back. They wanted to be able to say they checked every box, but then they were finding out that that, com that seat was a little bit too aggressive for them. It was a li little bit less comfortable than they wanted to on long trips. Um, so we created the GT2 seat 
to be a really nice blend that has the comfort of the, of the base seat, but also has the carbon fiber and uh, gloss black accents of the competition seat. And of course now, so we, now we have the, the base seat, you have your GT2 seat, which is optional on 2LT and standard on 3LT. It's a really nice Napa leather. It's, you can also order suede inserts if you want. And then of course we still do have the competition seat, which is even grippier than today. We have the performance textile fabric to really hold you in place on the bolsters and on the seat, uh, the seat cushion. <laughs> So depending on which trim level seat, you can order the competition in all three trim levels, and then uh, the GT1 is standard on a 1LT and 2LT, and on 2LT you can option the GT2 or competition. And then also for exterior color, uh, we have what, 12 different options? Yes. <clears throat> a couple new colors for, uh, for this year. Um, we're adding Accelerate Yellow, Rapid Blue, and Zeus Bronze. A lot of people have been asking us about Accelerate Yellow. Hopefully you'll be able to see a couple of those soon. And I'm going to hand it back to Harlan. He's going to talk a, bit, a little bit more. Well, let me jump in here. I talked about uh, the this, this side cove uh, on exterior. I gave an example of something we do that's kind of unique on the interior. I don't know if we can go back to uh, one of the overall interior shots, but this is a good one. If you look at these switches right here, you see three switches. That's the traction off button, that's the front cameras, and the front lift, if you get it. So on most manufacturers, and uh, I don't want to name one, but they're known for charging exorbitant prices for every little thing, and their car looks like a potato. <laughs> if, you don't, if you buy one of those cars, and you don't put a lot of options on it, what you get is big rows of blank switches. It, it says cheapskate, 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 all the way down <laughs> to everything you didn't order, and it's thousands of dollars to fill in one, each one of those little buttons. Even on a fully loaded car, there's still blank switches. <laughs> yeah, and, and the media gets in these cars, and they're always driving loaded cars, so they're saying, oh, the interior's nice. If you get a car that doesn't have everything, it looks really cheap. This looks like a, like a fleet car, a rental car, with all these blank spaces. Well, here's an example of where some cars, a 1LT, only has traction control off. You go to 2LT, and then you get the front cameras. If you check the front lift system, which we'll talk about later, the button goes there. But working with design, what we do is when you get the standard car, you get one button here. So we tool up a unique button that fills that whole space, so no blanks. So we did three different versions, one with one switch, one with two switches, and one with three switches, so it always looks like a complete car. Whether you pay $60,000 or $80,000, it still looks like a really nice, well-filled out car. So thanks for working with interior guys and trying to make that and make it affordable, because uh, that's a, a nice trick to do too. So um, something special we do for you guys. All right. Thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to talk to you guys about a minute about the, uh, the different trim levels. We didn't really go over this in any of the other presentations. And you hear a lot of us talking about, like to answer some of 1LT, 2LT, and 3LT. So how many people uh, sat in the uh, black car outside? So that's a 1LT car. And uh, a lot of people are amazed, you know, what we get, you know, for $59,995, including destination. Um, so you do get uh, things like a 10-speaker Bose audio system. You get the 12-inch screen and the 8-inch screens with Apple CarPlay, Android Autos, all standard, leather seats, all standard, 8-way uh, power. Power tilt and telescoping wheel is standard. Rear park assist is standard, uh, which we never, haven't had before, as well as the rear vision camera. You get the central locking, AM, FM, XM. Uh, so the car, the standard car 1LT, of course, and you get the LT2 V8 and the dual clutch transmission, and all that comes with that, and, and the uh, 19s and 20 wheels and all that. So you saw that car. I just want to point out that the standard car has a lot of standard features. So you're saying, well, what do I get if I up to the 2LT? 
I move up there. So we can, we added a lot of, um, if you remember with Corvette, we have a lot of the things that you're used to with 2LT, but a lot new that we've added that we haven't had before. So some of the new features uh, that are now included in 2LT are first of all the performance series Bose audio with 14 speakers, you talked about that yesterday, 640 watt system, very powerful. So the standard system is equivalent probably to the up-level system we had previously, and the new system is way above, way beyond that. Uh, and we, it also comes with the navigation, with the now features uh, real-time traffic, and it also comes with performance data recorder, which we have upgraded, so you can now, um, excuse me, you can now program it as a dash cam, so it automatically starts every time you start the car, and you can also uh, record both circuit tracks and autocross point-to-point -point tracks as well. It also has val valet mode. We've added, um, also added to that, you can get the power, um, sorry, the memory package has now been expanded to have both driver and passenger side. You say, why do we need it on the passenger side? Well, I think a lot of you are couples here, and how many people have had the passenger get in and say, who touched my seat? <laughs> Who's been sitting here? Are you cheating on me? Who's been in the seat? So, <laughs> so you say, push the button, just push the button. You're my number one, push number one. That's you. <laughs> So, uh, it's a great feature. Also on a road trip, you know, if you switch driver and passenger, you switch back and forth. And you can switch, you know, to your seats back and forth to your different heights or sizes. It really is a nice thing to have. Powerful mirrors. A lot of people are excited about that. It's not part of 2LT. And you can set it, you can either just push the button to power fold them, or you can set it so that every time you lock the car, it'll automatically fold them as well. And then we added a lot of features that you guys have asked for, um, things like blind, side blind zone alerts and rear cross traffic as well. So those are, those are new safety alerts that are included with the 2LT. Another new thing that we're all excited about, those of us who have driven the car, we think people are really going to appreciate, is the rear camera mirror. So how this works is your rear uh, view camera I'm sorry, your rearview mirror, you flip it and it turns into a video camera. So you can see out the rear, no blind spots, it's very high res, and you can also adjust it up and down or zoom it to whatever preference you like. A lot of us like to see a little bit of the rear, and that's what you see on the roof, the roof mounted camera. That's how you tell a 2LT and up as well. Also, um, we, we still have the front curb view cameras. Uh, again, good for seeing the, uh, the front of the car, but the difference is, Kaz was talking about it, we added a button, you just have to go in and find it on the touch screen, now it has its own dedicated button, so it's very easy to turn that on uh, when you need it, uh, when you need it as well. Another new feature, wireless phone charging. That's the little pocket that's between the seats, a lot of people were asking about what that's for. Nice place to put your phone, also get that wireless charging. And most of the new uh, phones are getting that. It's, you just put it there and it'll, and it'll um, charge it up for you. Head up display, we have a new full color head up display, it's also a big part of 2LT. So there's a lot of features on 2LT. It also opens up the natural color uh, interior and it also opens up the option for the GT2 seat. Now, all three chip trim levels are available with competition sport seats. On the 1LT, though, we did something a little different. We figured this is like, somebody gets a 1LT in competition, that's like the track car. You guys are hardcore. I don't want any of these options. I want to have it. So we, we, we did a performance textile version of the competition seat. On the others, um, 2LT and up, you get the lumbar adjust, you get the weight adjust, you get heated and ventilated in all the seats. So 2LT, you can actually get all three is the one that you get all three options, GT1, GT2, and competition. So the 3LT is our ultimate. That's our ultimate Corvette uh, interior. It, it comes standard with the GT2, so it upgrades you there, and has a full leather-wrapped interior. Both the instrument panel and the doors, upper and lower, which is new this time, the whole thing is wrapped in leather, and it's all uh, Napa, Napa leather. 
The other thing, the upper part of the interior is all suede, is all suede and is also color key to the interior. So the gray, the natural, they have a lighter color upper uh, part of the interior. And then we have the exclusive colors that Brian was going over, like the two-tone blue and the Morello and the natural dip are exclusive to the 3LT. So that's kind of the ultimate package there. So I hope that, just trying to shed some light on the three, uh, three packages we have. And we actually have, um, there's a silver car with gray seats that represents the 2LT, if you sat in that one with the gray two-tone. And then we have the, both the torch red and the other silver car with the two-tone blue interior, our 3LT. So you can go, if you want to see the difference, go back when we're done and check the three different trim levels out for yourself. Thanks, Harlan. Harlan, it's been such a trooper over the last week. Uh, you guys know we've been on the road uh, last week and a half with Carlisle. Last weekend, Harlan probably talked to every single one of the 60,000 people uh, that came there and another 8,000 or so, I think, uh, here this weekend. So uh, he hasn't been feeling all that well, but he's powering through. It was a once in a lifetime opportunity to get out and talk about this car. So thank you, Harlan. So, um, Somebody want to 